All right, let's pick up from here. That stuff. Marina Joyce is a British vlogger and beauty YouTuber who was known for her quirky and bubbly personality. Well, hey you! I don't think we've ever met before. This is something new. Anyway, hi, my name's Marina Joyce. What's your name? As time went on, Marina was able to cultivate a decent-sized following, but at one point her fans started to realize that she began to act different and not like herself. People speculated that she was either sick or suffering from depression or even on drugs. And this would come to a head when she posted this video, Date Outfit Ideas. I'm advertising their clothes, so this is me just advertising her clothes, and yeah, I love you guys so much. Aside from acting weird, in the video you can see a guy pointing a finger randomly in some shots. Also, you can vaguely hear her whisper, help me. And this is the dress that I'm wearing. After this video dropped, the hashtag SaveMarinaJoy started trending, and people were coming up with all sorts of theories and scenarios of what was going on with her. The main one being that she was kidnapped and forced to make videos. She then made a video addressing these concerns, saying that the reason for her odd behavior was indeed depression. All these videos that you watch about me, about people guessing what happened to me, I think if you see somebody saying something horrible about somebody, that just shows you who that person is. I simply don't want you to believe any of the conspiracy theories, because none of them are true, and I can promise you that. It's always best to believe the truth directly from the person themselves. I did suffer from depression. It was so bad. It hurts me to this day to think of all the reckless things I did that showed that I did not care about my life. Things that I would look back upon and feel so grateful to this day that I am still alive. I was heartbroken, truly unhappy. All I can do is tell you how I felt and that I was suffering badly. I didn't think anybody really cared about me truly until they made Saving Marina Joyce. And don't believe any of the conspiracy theories. They're literally all lies. I don't even know how all those conspiracy theories started, but yeah, just ignore them. I hope this got the truth across enough as possible for you to understand what I was going through and that I was going a hard time and that's I'm getting better now. After a while the mystery kind of died out and she continued making videos like normal. That is until 2019 when on August 7th Marina would be reported missing and she was missing for about nine days. During her disappearance her boyfriend was accused of kidnapping her or holding her hostage. He would then post this message on Instagram saying that she was in fact safe and sound and that she would make a video explaining her disappearance. But as far as I know she never explained it like the video never came out and things would only get weirder when she would later tweet this out. I never went missing in the first place. Also Brandon has been so loyal throughout all this so don't trust anybody but him when somebody says something because he's the one who knows everything and is my closest and protects me more than any other person out there. Usually with internet conspiracies people want it to be true because they're so bored and unfulfilled in their life but you know in reality she's probably just suffering from some mental issues and struggling to deal with it. Another possibility is that she's in an abusive relationship which definitely sounds a lot more plausible than the kidnapping theory. Sam Pepper aka Scam Pepper was one of the worst pranksters on YouTube and with company like Vitaly, Fuzitube, and Joey Salads, that's really saying something. Let's take a look at some of his work. His most popular video is How to Make Out with Strangers. Where? I think it should go without mentioning that, you know, all of his pranks are fake. And as it goes with most of these fake prank channels, in order for Sam to keep growing his channel, he had to keep doing wilder and wilder pranks, which eventually culminated in the famous fake hand ass prank. Excuse me, sorry to bother you. Do you know where the Apple store is? Um, like, I, was, I don't know if it's that way or... I don't know, I'm not really from here. What the hell? I what think... the fuck? Did no. you just... What? Oh my god. What happened? I don't know. What the fuck was that? I think that little old lady pinched your palm. Anyway, nice to meet you. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm sorry. I don't like that. Excuse me, did I just catch you disrespecting women? Anyways, this video was taken down by YouTube after two days and Sam would issue an apology, but this would pretty much be the beginning of the end for him. Following this prank, several women would accuse Sam of sexual assault, including Marina Joyce who I mentioned in the last entry. And then probably the nail in the coffin was the kidnapping prank. Kobe is in on the prank and Sam is getting pranked. Let's see how he reacts to his best friend of five years being killed in front of him. Just 
Oh my dude, you just got pranked. Bet you didn't see that one coming, huh? Fuck you, you just got pranked. Yo! Pranked, baby. <laughs> yeah, this psycho staged the kidnapping and execution of the other guy's friend. And they say British people are more classy. <laughs> After this, he would remove all his videos and rebrand himself as a vlogger and then an IRL streamer who collabed with Ice Poseidon a lot. He also posted clips to TikTok. I recently won the lottery, as some of you know, so today I headed over to Thailand to do some island shopping. I have a budget of around 10 million. Most recently, Sam Pepper has become an international criminal. So just in case you guys don't remember or you didn't hear about it last year, a bunch of content creators were shilling a cryptocurrency which was known as Save the Kids token, which was supposed to donate money to charity upon each transaction. But once people started buying the token and inflating the price, the influencers who were shilling the coin all sold their portion and made off with a bunch of money, while all their other poor schmuck fans who bought in were left with bupkis. And that's what's known as a rug pull. The token then disappeared without a trace. So this was blatant fraud. And Sam claimed that he wasn't aware, even though he sold all his coins right after it was made public, right when it was peaking. After this, he fled the US and went back to England, where he hopefully stays forever. Ajit Pai, do you guys remember the net neutrality debate that happened a few years back? Just in case you don't, net neutrality is the principle that internet service providers must treat all internet communications. equally and not charge users different rates based on content website or platform with net neutrality isps may not intentionally block slow down or charge money for specific online content without net neutrality isps may prioritize specific types of traffic meter others or potentially block traffic from specific services while charging consumers for various tiers of service this dickhead, this schmuck with the shit-eating grin, made it his life's mission to undo net neutrality in the name of deregulation. So, instead of having the internet regulated by the government, he wanted it to be regulated exclusively by profit-hungry ISPs. For more than a decade, it's been Mr. Pi's life's mission to repeal net neutrality, first giving a speech about it in 2012 during a testimony before Congress. In 2007, Pi began his career with the Federal Communications Committee, or FCC. And can you guess where he worked before that? Verizon Mother Sucking Wireless. And I'm guessing the checks didn't stop flowing when he left, if you know what I mean. In 2017, Donald Trump appointed him as chairman of the FCC, oh, where he would get right to work repealing net neutrality. But first, he had to try to get people on his side with some good old-fashioned propaganda. But not good propaganda, mind you. This is the video he released to try to get people on his side. I'm Ajit Pai. I'm the chairman of the FCC. Recently, there's been quite a bit of conversation about my plan to restore internet freedom. Here are just a few of the things you'll still be able to do on the internet. You can still gram your food. Quality. Are you selfieing or just... You can still post photos of cute animals, like puppies. <laughs> you can still shop for all your Christmas presents online. Yes. Got that bulk deal on fidget spinners. Yes! This is the same FCC that controls content on live television and music, entertainment all around. Wow. <laughs> Those Eclipse glasses are so cheap! This is the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Anybody who voted to repeal net neutrality after watching this video deserves to be castrated. Anyways, Ajit left his post at the FCC in 2020 and he now makes rise and fall videos on YouTube. Nikocado Avocado, okay? I, I did a whole entire iceberg video on this guy, so I'm not gonna dive too deep yeah, into him. Go watch nice. that if you're interested when this video is over, alright? Finish this video first, or pause it and watch that one, but come back to this one, alright? Just watch this video, you schmuck. Alinity is a very popular Twitch streamer. Now, there are three types of Twitch streamers. First, there's people who are good at video games. Secondly, you got people who are entertaining. And thirdly, you have attractive women who cultivate a large following consisting of mainly horny men with no social skills and 12-year-olds whose parents check their search history. 
Alinity falls into the third category. To be honest, I don't think I've ever watched Alinity or any streamers really. I, I think most Twitch streamers are dog shit, except for me, of course. You know, one thing is I've never ever watched Twitch or any streaming services. I have never gone live or anything like that. But I'll tell you what, if that was out during my... So once I got into music, I had another job in the entertainment industry. And then I went uh, on a little hiatus of like a, about a year. I swear on my grandmother, on me ever going to heaven, if there's, you know, there's, there's heaven. But I swear on my chances of going to heaven, I was ranked number two in the nation on PlayStation 3 in Madden on the second release of uh, Madden Football. And then after that, I just went all to shit. <laughs> I couldn't even play anymore. But that year, I mean, I probably could have made tons of money playing Madden and, you know, strategizing every time somebody at work thought like, oh, you can't beat me. I would, yeah, obliterate them. But like when they come out every year, some mechanics are different. And so I kept on effing up. And yeah, after that, I just never regained that glory. So that's one of my glory uh, regrets <laughs> that I never had an opportunity to stream it. I mean, internet connection back then was you know, crappy anyways, half the time people would just, you know, have to stop the game because it was so glitchy or going so slow, but I have that claim. Of course. Yo! This kid's parents, he's, he's vaping! Come get your son, he's fucking vaping! Dude, you know what vape does to a person, bro? Look at me. LOOK AT ME! PUT THE FUCKING VAPE DOWN! Put, throw it away! Throw it away! Fucking sick of this shit! Stop that! Stop fucking vaping, bro! So I got curious and decided to watch a stream of hers. Now I'm not gonna play a full clip of the stream because I don't want to get copy striked. But 5,000 concurrent streamers are watching this chick watch hoarders and saying a comment like every five minutes. And on their rights. It's near We've been over involved in this case. What's oh. happening is the rights of their neighbors are being affected. Alabama. How do I'm you Sarah. say it? Um, Andy and Becky Alabama? are my backyard neighbors. I have seen the otters move things from... Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to come off like only Alinity or only women do this shit. Because there's plenty of men on Twitch who get millions of views for absolutely no reason. Like Ms. Kiff, alright? He seems like a perfectly nice guy. He seems cool and everything. But most of the time he's just sitting around eating fucking cereal watching videos about him. Same thing with Adam Ross. Like, what? What do they do? What do these guys do? Help me, help me make sense of this. It boggles my mind. Now, Alinity got into a bit of hot water a few years back when she tried to, as she says, copy strike PewDiePie for calling her a Twitch thought in a video. Stupid Twitch thoughts. I just feel like they, they win over me, okay? And they're not gonna win over me. Stupid Twitch thoughts, no. S seriously? He just said that? I'm gonna copy strike this guy. Just for that word. Gonna copy strike him. Yo! Can we copy strike PewDiePie's latest video? Like right now? He called us Twitch thoughts. She then proceeded to brag about copyright claiming people for using her content. This altercation led to a back and forth between her and PewDiePie, but eventually they would squash the beef. But this wouldn't be the end of Alinity being a douchebag. I'm gonna kind of run through these quickly. In 2019, she threw a cat over her shoulder. The cat that, died on impact. Oh, no, I'm joking. If one thing that fucking pisses me off is people abusing animals. And when I was playing that emotional uh, best life advice uh, video that I hope you guys checked out, you know, my love of my daughter will always, always be of the utmost of me. I mean, just, I absolutely, she is like my precious little angel, you know, and I will always call her my baby no matter how old she is. But I talked about my dog and how vindictive my ex was and um, 
Yeah. Just, I fucking hated when, you know, she would make dinner and then make him wait and watch us eat. And he was very, very, very smart. We got him trained to be an aid dog. But, you know, then they pay you, like, monthly for the dog to, you know, aid someone. But we just, like, no, did it for the training. I mean, this dude, I, I would throw his toys and socks of mine, you know, rolled up and everything. And I would tell him, you know, go grab my socks. He would come back with socks or go grab your toy. He would come back with his green snake. And he was an English cream retriever. Absolutely just beautiful dog and i have this video somewhere i i would have to search for it but he uh i mean he would he would i mean i just i miss him and that's i i let you know that moment tonight just get the best of me and i it, it hurts because when you see how loyal a dog is to you they're just I mean, I'm just a dog person all the way around. And then when my daughter was born, and I've I've showed I showed these pictures before, but let me see if I could find this one. When my daughter was born, he would actually sit or go to sleep by her every single night when he used to do that with me. <laughs> Let's see, there he is, right here I don't know if you can see it well but I mean he could have basically been a show dog I mean he is just perfectly I know it's not focusing that well but he, I mean their breed is special and then this is when he sold out on me but I'm glad <laughs> He would always, when my wife, ex-wife, was pregnant, I have insomnia, so I didn't want to sleep right next to her because I'd keep her up all night. And then when she actually gave birth to the baby, she uh, said, okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll take turns, you know, watching her. And then she uh, came back and said, you know what, in other words, let's do this. While my maternity leave is much longer than yours, uh, you know, I'll get up and I'll take care of the baby, this and that. And, you know, you could sleep. And uh, when I go back to work, we'll just start rotating. I'm like, are you sure? Because it sounds like a setup. And it was a setup because I could hear her hollering and screaming that she has to get up. And, oh, my God, it just pissed me off. And every time I would go sleep downstairs, there's my dog, you know, going down there. And one time I tried to trick him and I got the door closed. Never ever 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 did he scratch at something or you know whine and he was scratching at the door that's how badly he wanted to be by me and when the baby was born it was like he was her natural protector and this is a, this is a picture of him every night from that day forward his bed was you know he loved his bed you know it was one of those comfy looking beds we got at this pet store he absolutely loved that bed, but he would sacrifice himself to go sleep by my daughter. And there's a picture of my baby and him. And that's how I would find him every single day when my daughter was born. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow. It's like they, they have that intuition that most people don't, you know, realize how smart and brilliant some of these animals are and how well they can be trained and He's an example of that. So when I see somebody like my ex used to hit him on the nose because he was drooling watching us eat, I would get so infuriated that, oh, it just, I mean, that's why he gravitated towards me. So with this stupid little twitch chick throwing her cat like that, fucking idiot. Like, it, it, it would be hard for me to control myself by not just wanting to verbally rip her, you know, a new one. You know, I would never lay my hands on a woman, but man, you, you should never treat an animal like that ever. And I'm sorry I went off on a long tidbit there, but that's just my personality. I just don't think that, you know, in any, in any form is that, you know, acceptable. I, that's awful. And yeah, that's just, that's terrible.
and the cat was fine. But apparently this wasn't the only time she did something stupid to her pets. There was another clip that resurfaced of her feeding her cat vodka, which is toxic to cats, I guess. She also got slammed for allegedly saying the N-word, but if you watch the full clip, she didn't actually say it. People were just piling on because they didn't like her, which is wrong. Oh, and then she admitted to basically committing immigration fraud by marrying a guy and divorcing him after getting citizenship. So I went to medical school in Colombia, and you don't want to be a doctor in Colombia. It sucks. Like, you don't make any money. You work a lot. So I was like, no, hell no. So I married a Canadian, and I came to Canada. <laughs> And then I divorced them. <laughs> this caused multiple people to report her to the Canadian government. But it turned out that her husband is the one who cheated on her and actually filed the divorce. Not her. Then comes the infamous nip slip video where she accidentally showed her left nipple. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. What? Now, I've watched this about 500 times, you know, just, just for research for this video. And I can indeed say that the nipple was indeed shown for a split second. Now, showing any kind of nudity on Twitch would result in an automatic ban. That is, unless you're a lenity, because Twitch did absolutely nothing. Not only in this instance, but there were numerous other times when she could have gotten banned but didn't. Like the cat throwing incident, for example. This led to people claiming that Twitch showed favoritism to her, with some even going so far as to say that she was sucking people off at Twitch, and that's why she wasn't getting in trouble. Which... Doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure she lives in Canada, so what is she doing? Flying out to Twitch headquarters and sucking off some dude and then flying back? Come on, bro. Be logical. And, you know, I gotta give her a little bit of credit. You know, since all of her controversy, she's kind of flown under the radar. She's chilled out a little bit. She seems a bit more humble, so shout out to her. Austin Jones was a YouTuber and singer-songwriter who had a promising career in music. He was known for doing these acapella oh, videos where he would too. do covers of popular songs. and eventually made his own original music. His first EP hit number 12 on iTunes pop charts, and he started touring and selling out shows. Now, Austin stated that his biggest inspiration was Elvis Presley. In fact, he wanted to be like <laughs> Elvis so bad that he picked up one of Elvis's favorite pastimes, hooking up with underage girls. In 2017, it was discovered that Austin had been in contact with multiple underage women, okay? And I'm not talking they're a month away from turning 18. I'm talking 14, 15 years old, okay? He would contact these girls who were fans of him online and convince them to twerk for him. He would give them instructions and directions, and then he would record the act. Now, let's be honest. There's a very low chance that somebody with this haircut isn't diddling kids. Like, this mother sucker had that can I speak to the manager cut, bro. After these allegations surfaced, Austin released a video entitled Setting the Record Straight, in which he would proceed to not set the record straight at all. But at least you will have your opinion based off of the full story and the truth. I've recently come under some fire on social media for mistakes I've made in the past. I used to ask fans for twerking videos. Yes, twerking the dance move. It's not something that I'm proud of. It's not something that I think is right. And I shouldn't have done it. it sounds like. This really blew up online when a YouTuber and someone that's very popular on social media somehow found this out and decided to blast it out there. I'm not gonna say any names because I've come under attack on social media from my name being spread around and I don't want to put that on anyone else. So throughout this story, I'm not going to say any names. It really blew up online and uh, sent me down a path that uh, is pretty scary and I'll go into more detail about this. Um, but first what I want to do is set the record straight. Since this started online, there are a lot of rumors and a lot of lies. They're just not true. Nothing ever went further than twerking videos. There were never any nudes, never any physical contact. Oh yeah, no big deal. Oh, it's okay guys, it was, it was just twerking videos, what? 
You, you, you mean to tell me you've never asked a minor for a twerking video? Come on, what, what's the big deal here? It's just twerking videos. Austin would get charged with multiple counts of producing inappropriate videos involving a child. And during the trial, his defense really backfired. But your honor, it was just twerking videos. He was sentenced to 10 years in federal wow. prison. Slazo is an Australian YouTuber who mostly made commentary videos. His videos were nothing crazy, you know, nothing too edgy. He seems like a pretty nice guy from what I can tell. But one of his ex-girlfriends would tell the world that he in fact was not a nice guy and that he was controlling, abusive, manipulative, and worst of all, a Franklin fan. No, but let's be serious here. No more Franklin what jokes because we're going to talk about some dark topics. So, his ex-girlfriend Che posted a twit longer detailing all of Slazo's terrible behavior. During our time together, Slazo, or Michael, was incredibly demanding of sexual favors and would often guilt or force me into situations with which I was not comfortable. If I was to try and deny or argue against him, he would become aggressive. She also went on to say that on their first date, he pressured her into having coitus, despite her never even having kissed anyone before. In addition to the twit longer, she also attached some chats that the two of them had, which did not paint him in the best light. Keemstar would then cover this on Drama Alert. Slazo said this to me in the DMs. He said, Shay and I have resolved this whole thing between ourselves a few times now, and I'm not sure what I can do anymore. I've apologized to her on multiple occasions. We met in person once, and I tried to put this to bed there. During which she said that she could tell I'd changed for the better, and even mentioned getting back together again if she and her current boyfriend didn't work out, which I found weird. There's a lot more to this, there are things in her statement that were straight up false, but I don't want to rush and bring them to light. I want to cover them properly. So apparently he is going to make some type of response. Serious allegations with that story. So yeah, Slazo claimed that there was more to the story and that the situation wasn't nearly as bad as Che made it out to seem and that the chats were taken out of context. She then posted a second twit longer explaining the context of the meeting that the two of them had and also explained the claim Slazo made. She also said she would break up with her current boyfriend for me, which weirded me out to be honest. Regarding that quote, she said, I am not going to deny that I said this, but he has taken the situation out of context. I had met with Michael to talk about what had happened during our relationship to sort our issues out, to which we met at a cafe to talk. After talking in this cafe, Michael said he needed to drop things off at his hotel. We arrived and I said I would stay downstairs in the lobby and he told me no, you should come up. Despite feeling awkward, I felt safe in the fact that my friends knew who I was with and that I would be okay believing Michael had changed. When in his room, Michael asked me multiple times to come up to the bed so we could hug and talk face to face to which I, although feeling uncomfortable, agreed to. Michael then after talking told me he missed me and missed this and asked if we could ever possibly try again. I am alone in a room with this man on the bed with him and he asked me that. I answer, maybe if me and my current boyfriend don't work out and I apologize. Just something that I would like to add, I am a four foot nine female and Michael is almost six foot two. I was honestly intimidated and worried that something may happen because of his anger issues that are shown in the Discord screenshots. We left the room soon after and I was uncomfortable from this, but wanted to believe that he had changed and gave him the benefit of the doubt. I have not seen Michael in person since. Slaza would later follow up these accusations with a 26 minute long video titled, My Side. In the video he admits that while he was a douchebag, the situation was greatly exaggerated by Che. He also had receipts that both proved his side and greatly discredited Che. But I do have plenty of evidence from very early on in the relationship where she clearly made no intention to wait until 16. That was never clear to me. I never got that impression and I don't know why she's saying that. He also claims that she, in fact, is the one who initiated the sexual stuff at the cinema. Again, providing screenshots of the discussions they had about the topic. We went into the cinema. We had our first kiss. Our teeth hit each other's. Neither of us knew what we were doing. And I was willing to call it quits there when she pulls my hand down and says to to touch her, um, which is a pretty long way from how she portrays it in her version of the story. In fact, she was actually the one who brought up the entire idea of doing anything in the cinema. It was her idea and I had no reason to believe she wasn't as in on this as I was, so I, I'm not sure why why she made it look like it this. would then later be revealed by turkey tom that multiple big youtubers colluded with che to ruin slazo's reputation for what reason i have no clue but this whole situation almost ruined this man's life to the point where he hasn't posted on youtube in over a year 
Pro Jared. Pro Jared is a gaming YouTuber who was a member of Normal Boots along with another controversial YouTuber, JonTron. If you look through his content catalog, it's all very inoffensive and non-controversial gaming stuff. But in May of 2019, Jared would have one of the largest sub losses in YouTube history by percentage. Over the course of a few weeks, he would go from just over a million subscribers to around 760,000. That's a quarter of his entire subscriber base. And while he would later regain a portion of that loss, he would never recuperate everything. And his YouTube channel is currently stagnated compared to how it was before. So, what the heck happened? What did this guy do that was so bad? Did he emulate uh, Nintendo games or something? Me, no. Not quite that bad. It all started with this tweet. My wife Heidi and I have filed for divorce. I know this may come as surprising and unsettling for many of you. But know that we do this so that we may both seek happiness for ourselves. Now this tweet made it seem like the split was amicable, which apparently was not the case. Jared was married to cosplayer Heidi O'Farrell, who tweeted, I recently learned that my husband Pro Jared has been having coitus with Holly Conrad behind my back for months. I have no idea what announcement he just made because he blocked me. She would go on to make a series of replies to the original tweet, giving more details about the situation. I have proof, explicit conversations and photographs of their relationship which he extensively lied to me about on many occasions. He was promising me that he was committed to our relationship at the time and promising her he was breaking up with me. It's also true that he has been soliciting nudes from his fans for years. I was there in the beginning. It was a joke on Tumblr, then it was its own Tumblr account just for nudes. It was ostensibly a body positivity space for consenting adults and I approved on that basis. Which is true, he did have a thing for nude submissions on Tumblr, which is pretty freaking weird if you ask me, but that's not the bad part. The bad part is that other people were alleging that Jared tried to obtain nudes from them and have sexually charged conversations with them when they were underage. Jared would largely be silent on this matter, which fueled the flames of people thinking he was guilty. Then after three months, he would eventually release a video called You've Been Lied To, detailing his side of the situation. He stated that the reason it took him so long to respond is because he was putting together a legal defense and didn't want to do anything without consulting with his lawyers. In this video, he kind of debunks most of the claims made against him. What this all came down to was people saying that I was exchanging nudes with fans on Snapchat and Tumblr. And a lot of people want to know if I did any of that. Yeah, I did. I always made it clear that it was for consenting adults only. To be clear, it was an open invitation to those who wanted to participate. The choice was always up to them. This guy basically had his whole life ruined by false allegations similar to Slazo. Very sad. FPS Russia, or Dmitry Potapov, as he is known on YouTube, was a YouTuber with a heavy Russian accent who made videos of him doing a bunch of cool shit, like shooting <laughs> different kinds of firearms, driving tanks, blowing stuff up, and on more than one occasion, almost getting himself killed. Let's get a nice big explosion, maybe a little shrapnel going. Maybe a lot of shrapnel. Wow, he's fucking lucky. Oh now you might be asking yourself, how did this guy get access to these kinds of weapons? And how did he get the money to buy these weapons? Like, if he was actually Russian, that would make more sense, right? Wait. Oh, did I forget to mention he's not Russian at all? He's just some dude named Kyle from Georgia, which... Should have been obvious. Like, if you thought this fake-ass Russian accent was real, you must be remedial. Hello, my friends. It is FPS Russia, and I bring you another video. The more I learn about America, the more I am surprised. Anyways, the way Kyle was able to get his hands on these kinds of weapons is because he was sponsored by a company named FPS Industries, which is a custom firearms fabrication and testing company. Despite making very cool and unique videos, Kyle hasn't posted any videos on the FPS Russia YouTube channel since 2016. So let's get to the insane part. Kyle obviously had a large production team around him because of the types of videos he was making. One of the members of his production team was a guy named Keith Ratcliffe, who actually co-founded the Russia FPS channel with Kyle and was the owner of FPS Industries. One day Keith was found in his home shot in the back of the head one time execution style. 
According to the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, there was no signs of forced entry at the business. Surveillance wow. equipment along with some firearms had been taken. There did not appear to be a struggle of any kind, and based on the scene, Ratcliffe may have been killed by an individual or individuals he trusted. This led many people to speculate that Kyle was perhaps behind the assassination. Following his death, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms raided Kyle's house and found a lot of marijuana and hash oil. The Department of Justice prosecuted him on the grounds that having illegal substances while in possession of a firearm is a federal offense. He was later charged with possession with intent to distribute marijuana, which he pleaded guilty to, and all of his other charges were dismissed. For this, he would receive two months in federal prison and two years probation. To this day, Keith's killer still hasn't been caught. Well, guys, that's about all we have. Thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around till the end, I know it was a long video, so I really appreciate it. Also, if you enjoyed it, I would really, really appreciate if you guys would like the video and subscribe to my channel. It would help me out a lot. Uh, I don't know what's going on at YouTube headquarters, if they got it out for me or something, but my last two videos got demonetized, uh, which sucks, it's unfortunate, because I put a ton of time and effort into these videos, but, uh, if you guys want to support me, you know, financially in the hopes that one day I might be able to do this full time, then, you know, go check out my Patreon. No